Catholic family, St. Josephine Bakita. Okay, everyone. Before we begin today's lesson, I'd like to introduce you our new classmate. Her name is Nakun, and she's from Africa. She'll be with us for the rest of the year because her family has moved here. Yes, her father works in the same office as my dad. Nakun, would you like to tell us something about your country? We'd love to hear about it. Don't be shy, I'm sure it's interesting. I think she's really shy. Of course she is, she doesn't know anyone. All right, maybe some other time. And now for a basket. Mm. I did it! Hey, should we ask her if she wants to play? Okay. Nakun, do you want to play with us? Who, me? Sure. Do you want to play basketball? Come on, you can have the ball first. No, you play without me. It doesn't matter if you don't know how to play. We'll show you. I prefer to read. Well, up to you. If you change your mind later, you can always join in. You'll see they're wonderful people. Thomas, it is great to see you. Robert, let me introduce my wife, Helen, and Father Michael. Well, I am delighted to meet you both. Darling, it's Thomas, Helen, and Father Michael. I'm so happy to meet you. Let me introduce Berta, my wife. Helen and I would be honored if you'd consider us your hosts in this town. Yes, if there's anything you need, you can count on us. Thank you so much, you're too kind. It must be so hard moving somewhere new, making new friends, getting used to everything. Well, we're getting things done. Father Michael is like a member of our family. I guess so. The whole parish is like one big family. Actually, we don't attend church all that often. Well, I just want you to know that I'm here if you need me. Hi there, Nakun. Won't you say hello, dear? I'm sorry, she's very shy. We're very worried about Nakun. We think she's too quiet. Berta and I have talked to several child psychologists, but... At her old school, the children laughed at her because she wore glasses. And I don't think she ever got over it. She spends all her time reading in her room. She doesn't have any friends. That's a pity. I'll speak to Sister Patricia and see what we can do for her. I'll ask Sarah to make friends with her. Thank you so much. We don't know what else we can do. Hey, look, it's a new girl. What are you eating? Come on, I asked you a question. What is that? I have no idea. It must be something they eat in her country. You think? Let's see if it tastes good. <clears throat> Yuck. It's horrible. What is it? I don't know, but it tastes awful. Oh. <sighs> we have to help them. Yes, of course we do. Her parents are very worried. I'll talk to the girls and see what we can come up with. Sarah and Paula are both good girls. I think that's a great idea. Well, that's all for today. For next week, I'd like you to do the exercises on page 23 of your textbooks. Nakun, can I speak to you for a moment? I know you love to read, so instead of doing the exercises, I want you to read this book. It's the biography of St. Josephine Bakita. She was from Africa, just like you. Thank 
you. When you finish it, we can talk about it. Would you like that? Hey, look who it is. Well, well, well. It's the new girl. Hey, leave her alone. Oh, yeah? And what are you going to do about it? Right. There's three of us and there's only one of you. Don't worry about them. They're all talk. Just ignore them. They're not worth crying about. Seriously. The name Bakiter means the lucky one, which is certainly an appropriate name for our saint. To be truly lucky is to know, love, and serve God. However, her good fortune did not come easily. Hey, are you listening? My life is hard too, just like Bakita's. My life was changed forever when slave raiders came to Al Ghassar and abducted my sister. I remember how much my mother was crying and how much we too were crying. But that's not the worst part. Bagito was captured two years later and they sold her as a slave. When I was about nine years old, I was walking in the countryside with a friend when suddenly two strangers appeared. Greetings, girls. You seem to know this forest very well. Can you find me some fruit? There's no fruit here. I'll have to go to the other side of the forest. Very well. Be quick. We'll wait for you. You can go on your way. She'll soon catch up with you. They planned to abduct me and they sent my friend far away. Not suspecting their intentions, I obeyed them as I always did. When I was deep in the forest, I realized the two men were following me. Don't struggle. If you shout, we'll hurt you. Come with us. And that's how she was caught, to be sold as a slave. She really suffered just like me. Sister Patricia, we don't know what to do about Nakum. Well, I think you should invite her to the spiritual exercises for girls here at the convent. It's just, I don't think she prays much. Even more reason. You know, we could pray for the intercession of St. Josephine Bakita. She was an African woman, and she had a very hard, hard life. She was a slave, wasn't she? That's right. She was sold to five different owners over a period of eight years. Her fourth owner was the worst. In her autobiography, she says, I thought I might die at any moment. Vakita tried to escape. Where do you think you're going? Get down from there immediately. I'm going to make an example of you. On one occasion, one of the slave owner's sons hit her so hard that for a month she couldn't get out of her straw bed. Dear God, you made the stars in the sky. Help me. This owner, the fourth, sold her to the Italian consul in Sudan, Mr. Calista Liani, who would give her her freedom. And Bakita would work as a free woman. She was the housekeeper. That's a very sad story. Yes, she had an extremely unhappy childhood. But how about this? Do you know what Bakita means? It means lucky one. Lucky one? Did she think she was lucky? She was a cheerful person and always believed she'd be set free. She placed her trust in God, although she didn't know him. She wasn't a Catholic? Nope. She wasn't even a Christian. Nobody had told her about God. Nobody had told her that God is our Father. God, how beautiful the stars are tonight. Help me not to give up hope. One day I will be happy too, just like Paquita. Hi there, Nakun. Hello. Is that a good book? Yes, I'm learning a lot. Hey, have you ever thought of doing spiritual exercises? What are they? We stay at the convent for two days. It's all about praying. Well, I, um, I don't, I don't pray much. 
That's okay, it's not a problem. You can talk to Sister Patricia. She's really nice. Yes, she'll be able to help you. You'll see. I don't know. I'll think it over. Listen to this. The Italian merchant Callisto Legnani bought Paquita in 1882. He was her fifth owner. She wrote, This time I really was the lucky one because my new master was a good man. He was very kind and affectionate towards me. You see? Paquita never gave up hope, just like me. In 1884, Legnani was forced to abandon Khartoum when it was attacked by Mahdi's troops. Baguito wanted to stay with her master when he went to Italy with his friend Augusto Micheli. So she left Africa? That's right. From that time, she lived in Italy, and since slavery was against the law there, she worked for the Michelis as a nanny, taking care of their daughter, Mimina. So she was free at last! You see, despite everything that happened to her, she never gave up hope. And finally, she made it. I still think it would be great if you could do those spiritual exercises with us. Well, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Well, girls, I'm very happy to see you all are here. I especially want to welcome Nakun because this is the first time she's done spiritual exercises. And I'm going to tell you all about the story of Josephine Baquita. I would love to hear about her. I'm glad that you're enjoying the book. Now, in 1888, the Michalili family bought a hotel and moved to Suakin. But Baquita decided to stay in Italy. I'm not surprised. She had suffered a lot in Africa. That's right. What happened was, was that Baquita and the Michaili's daughter were entrusted to the Institute of Catechumens in Venice, better known as the Canossian Sisters. That's where she first learned about God as our father. The sisters treated her with great kindness. Baquita, my dear, aren't you cold? Well, a little, but I love being here. This breeze reminds me of home. Here, here, have my jacket. But, 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 what about you? I'm going to the chapel now and I don't need it. You can give it back to me later. Bakita was very surprised. No one had ever treated her so well in her life. The sisters seemed to be ready to serve her. Hello, Bakita. Hello, sister. What are you reading? I'm, I'm reading the gospel. Ah, the life of our Lord Jesus. Sister, there's something I wanted to ask you. For a long time, I've been wondering why all the time you're always so cheerful. Well, you see, children of God are loved and it gives them great joy. Children of God? That's right. We're all children of God. But in that case, God is our Father? Yes. And you know, He's not just any father. God loves you more than any other father or mother on earth loves their children. Goodness. And does He love me as well? Well, of course he does, my dear. He loves you far more than you imagine. And he just wants you to be happy. But how can God love a slave who has nothing to offer him? Listen, let me tell you something. However unimportant you feel, in the eyes of God, your life has huge value. Jesus shed his blood for all of us without exception. And I'll tell you something else. We are all slaves, too. We are servants of Jesus, and through him, of all men and women who are in need. And why don't I give all of myself to God and Jesus like these religious sisters? They have shown me the love of God and have been so good to me. It was at the convent that Bakita really came to know Christ and saw that God always had been in her heart and that he had given her the strength to survive slavery. I knew it. She never gave up hope. That's right. She had always trusted in God, even though she didn't know Him until that moment. She was baptized and received her first Holy Communion and Confirmation on the same day, January 9, 1890, from the Cardinal of Venice. She took as her Christian name Josephine Margarita Fortunata. Shortly afterwards, she decided to become a religious sister and asked permission from the Archbishop of Venice, Cardinal Sarto. My daughter, take your vows without fear. Jesus wills it. Jesus loves you. Love him in return. When she was baptized, she said, 
Here I become one of the daughters of God. Her joy was beyond words, and in her biography, she describes how every day she came to know more about God, who had brought her there by his providence. Oh, Lord, if I could fly to meet my people and tell them of your goodness at the top of my voice. Oh, how many souls would be one. First of all, my father, my mother, my brothers, my sister who's still in slavery, and all the poor people of Africa. Jesus, help them all to know you and to love you. In God's will, there is great peace. If we did not have faith in the Lord, what would we do in this world? The whole of my life has been a gift from God, and men have been his instruments. I thank him for giving me the gift of faith. If I spent the rest of my life on my knees, it would not be enough to express my gratitude to the good Lord. Hello, Nakun. Hello, Sister Patricia. You know, I want to be as happy as Pequita, but... What is it? The children always laugh at me because I wear glasses. And now they laugh at my clothes, too. Well, the most important thing isn't what other people think. It's what God thinks of you. Really? And what does God think of me? I'll tell you. Do you see these flowers? They're pretty, aren't they? They're beautiful, just like the stars. Well, if God created all this and made it so beautiful, don't you think that you're more important than the flowers and the stars? Really? Yes, of course. In the eyes oh. of God, you're even more beautiful. You're his daughter. A father loves his child more than himself. I never thought of that. I'm more beautiful than the stars? God created all the stars for you. All creation is a gift from God to humankind. You know, Sister Patricia, maybe God was in my heart all along and I just didn't realize it. I'm... I'm sure he was. Just like what happened to Josephine Bagita. I was having such a bad time, but now I'm here talking to you and you've taught me so much. I'm very glad, Nakun. Let God into your heart. Let yourself be loved. You'll find a great source of peace and happiness. Now I'm going to tell you more about the story of Josephine Baquita. On December 8, 1896, at 27 years of age, she took her religious vows. Baquita was sent to Venice in 1902, where she worked in the convent as a cook, cleaner, and doorkeeper. During her life, she wasn't known for doing extraordinary things, but she was famous for her saintliness. She was always modest and humble. Sister Josephine, I think that you should write a book about your life. But, but Mother, I... There's nothing special about me. Who would be interested in a poor slave? You could be a great help to many people. Your life is full of hope. Very well, Mother. I will do as you say. I will do it for God and for people's souls. If I were to meet the slave traders who kidnapped me and even those who tortured me, I would kneel and I would kiss their hands. For if that had not happened, I would not be a Catholic and religious today. God teaches us to forgive, just as Jesus forgave those who crucified him. And when we forgive, our heart is at peace and we become happier. Hey look, the new girl's playing basketball! Hey, that's me. Cut it out, okay? Sorry, I forgot you were the protector of everyone in town. <laughs> <laughs> you know something? Oh, wow, she can speak. <laughs> <laughs> I forgive you. I forgive all three of you. What did you say? Are you going to laugh at me because I wear glasses or because my clothes are different? Well, go ahead. You can laugh. I don't care. You know, I've learned a lot from you. Thank you. Oh, get real. Hey, quit making fun of us. Do you think we're dumb? Come on, what have you learned from us? I've learned to forgive others and to love them like God does. We wanted to say thank you. The change in Nakuna has been incredible. She's a different girl. 
Now she laughs and looks happy. I'm very happy. God has touched Nakun's soul. You have succeeded where so many doctors failed. It wasn't us. It was the work of God. Are you coming to play basketball? Sure, but at first I want to finish reading this book. Look, this part is about how Josephine Paquita died. Apparently, in her final years she got very sick and had to use a wheelchair. But she never stopped traveling. Paquita died on February the 8th, 1947. And her last words were for the most blessed Virgin Mary. Our Lady, Our Lady. Thousands of people went to say goodbye and to show the respect and admiration they felt for her. You see, people really loved her. And she achieved that because she never gave up hope until she found God. Of course. Sister Patricia says that the most important thing is to let God into your heart. She was declared a saint by Pope John Paul II on October 1st, year 2000. How are things, boys? Are you maybe thinking about Nakun? Maybe. I see. You know, I think she taught you a lesson about friendship and maturity. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I'll leave you to think it over. I'm totally sick of this. Yeah, you're right, but... I know, I know. You don't need to say it. Then let's go and tell her we're sorry. Hey, does it have to be right now? And when do you plan to talk to her? Next year sometime? You're right. The sooner we tell Nakun we're sorry, the better. I've been thinking about it since yesterday, and I can't get it out of my head. Lord, help me by the intercession of Josephine Baquita. Always to be full of happiness because I am your daughter. You are my father, and you love me more than all the fathers and mothers in the world can love their children. Jesus, I ask you, by the intercession of St. Josephine Paquita, to help me forgive those who offend me, just as you do. Amen. <laughs>